I don't know exactly what is the, the root cause or, uh, for cancer, but I know that there are a few things that are important. Um, and just to be a little bit more methodical perhaps, because it helps me, uh, we could start from outside and then we can go in. While you already know that I probably have a tendency to start within and then come out. So when a person comes in, um, it's great that well, what type of cancer they have, what is the pathology, what is the biopsy, what they have done and so forth. But I think it's important to just check in to see what does that mean? What is it that they have cancer? Cancer, it's a biological process that we know of. But, and I think for us to ignore the biography of where we've, where we've been that has, in a way, either caused or contributed to this particular dysregulation that we call cancer, I think it's important. So our history is extremely important. Um, the, the various different traumas that, we're, that we've been exposed to is extremely important. And there, you know, and I am of the opinion, although maybe to some extent esoteric, that sometimes it might not necessarily be that particular traumas that we have been exposed to, that there is this concept of transgenerational traumas that, that you know, that it could get passed down to the next generation. And uh, so that, that is also important. Um, besides our biography in terms of where we've been, what we've done, then we'll start asking questions about our lifestyle. Um, how are we eating? I mean, you know, uh, you look at Hippocrates, uh, you know, said something like, let your, let your food be your medicine and medicine your food, um, or something to that effect. But the point is that, you know what, what we're exposed to and what we're eating three or four or some people five or six times a day, um, you know, it, it's, it has an effect on us. So if we continuously ignore the, um, our food, what we're putting inside our body, it will sooner or later, it will cause uh, that lack of awareness will have a particular manifestation that might be cancer, okay? Um, this could be as simple as, um, you know, eating um, food that, they're, uh, that they have significant amount of toxicity. Now, toxicity, it's a general term. The biological, um, the actual term, we refer to it as xenobiotic. Anything that's foreign to our body, it's considered to be really toxin. Um, it could be various different hormones that we might be exposed to. It, it could be a particular a food that they're genetically modified. Definitely does have an effect on us, but it's so new that perhaps um, although there are documented research uh, that genetically modified uh, organisms, they do have an effect when it comes to depression and ADD and ADHD and so forth, dif different hyperactivity and so forth. And if memory serves me correctly, this was uh, documented using functional MRIs. But uh, when it comes to cancer, I I'm not sure, I'm not aware of any direct link. But I think that's some, that's, we need to look at that and we need to uh, you know, bring that under a more of a scientific scrutiny and look at it. So the food that we're, that we're eating, that's extremely important. Are we eating organic? Are we not eating organic? Are we eating um, a, a tremendous amount of, um, you know, animal proteins? Uh, well, what kind of animal prote protein are we, are we consuming? Is it organic? Is the beef we're consuming, is it grass-fed? Is it not? Are they, you know, are they filled with antibiotics and various different hormones. Um, I say this, this actually, there was uh, in, uh, in a journal uh, called CHEST, which is perhaps one of the most uh, scientific um, journals and, and uh, orthodox journals. Um, uh, th there was a particular article that they compared, they asked the question, um, is something to the effect that is eating chicken soup therapeutic for you? And they had looked at chicken soup from Spain, 
um, if memory serves me correctly, uh, chicken soup from UK, chicken soup from United States, and chicken soup from China. Well, guess what? The most therapeutic chicken soup was from Spain and in that particular study. And the least therapeutic chicken soup was from China. Well, they did a little bit, uh, they researched it and they looked into it and they realized what was the difference. Well, it just turned out that in Spain they were using uh, ciprofloxacin, which is one of the strongest antibiotics as chicken feed. So when you were eating your chicken soup, not only you were eating your chicken soup, but you were also getting your antibiotics. And you know, I'm being, there's an undertone of being facetious, but it's really sad. It's very sad that, uh, that you know, we're, we think we're eating chicken soup, but it, it's just so filled with antibiotics. And that has given rise to this incredible array of superbugs that they're, uh, you know, that they're just, they're resistant to all these antibiotics that we have. So food is extremely important. Um, our environment is extremely important. It could be as, uh, you know, it could be as, uh, could be as significant as uh, you know if you're working in a mine or it could be as simple as sitting behind a computer and well look it's a computer it has various different um, uh, metallic and non-metallic things that it gets hot when it gets hot all these metals the thallium or different things they get vaporized and you start breathing it in now, you include that sitting behind the computer in a closed environment that's non-ventilated, okay, for five, six hours at a time, day after day, then you start bioaccumulating all these toxins in your tissue. And the organs that they have the highest content of fat, that's where you bioaccumulate all the toxins. And that's our brain, that's the breast tissue, that's our uh, liver uh, and, and various different organs. So um, environmental exposure to toxins becomes important. And um, so, so far we've, t we've started with the traumas, we've talked about the food that we eat, we've looked at the environmental factors and you know and, and then you can look at everything else uh, including the, the amount of medicines that we're taking including uh, uh, the level of relating that we have with people around us and how do we feel connected? Um, is there, do we have a purpose for our life? Uh, do we feel that we're contributing um, to anything? Are we following our bless? Are we living life uh, enthusiastically? You know, are we sucking the marrow out of life or we're just simply waking up going to work because we got mortgage to pay because we got a family and we got a job and we're sitting there and you know frightened that oh god I, I feel so insecure I really don't know what I'm doing let me just pretend that I know what I'm doing so I can save my job now living in that particular mindset it creates conflicts and it creates uh, manifestations. It creates results that could lead into a dysregulated system. And cancer is when that particular system goes haywire. It's dysregulated. So instead of creating more trauma, more dysregulation, more conflict, more fear, we've got to take a step back. There's a dog bite. Instead of pulling away, you stop. You take a deep breath you realize that you're a divine being having a human experience and you realize that you have the answers within you.